Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another Stock Pick of the Day video. It is January 22nd. Now I have covered this one recently, I think within the last few months on the channel. I usually do not cover one that recently, but today a huge drop on Archer Daniel Midland, uh, ticker ADM. We are going to take a look at this one. This is out of the consumer staple sector. Let's jump right in the video. And if you have not done so and you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that thumbs up if you find value in the content. Hit that subscribe button and join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community and hit that notification bell down below so you're notified whenever we post any new content. That really does help out a small YouTube channel like me. And drop me a comment down below. And let me know what you think of the video. Do you hold Archer Daniels Midland in your portfolio? Is it one you're watching or is it one you're avoiding altogether? Now, this is the vested interest stock screen this. So I set up the videos. It's also how I look at a company on a high level and see if I am interested in investing. If it meets five of eight, it goes on my watch list or six of nine. If it's a financial company like a bank, that's why I add in price to book here. You can use price to book for any company. But if it's not a financial company like a bank, don't use the one uh, as the metric there. Go ahead and compare it to other companies in the same sector. Now back to Archer's Daniels Midland. If you want to know more about this company, check them out at www.adm.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. That is www.adm.com. For those of you in the military, Alpha, Delta, Mike would be the nomenclature. ADM's purpose is to unlock the power of nature to enrich the quality of life. We're a global leader in human and animal nutrition and the world's premier agricultural organization and processing company. Our breadth, depth, insights, facilities, and logistical expertise give us unparalleled capabilities to meet needs for food, beverages, health and wellness, and more. From the seed of the idea of the outcome of the solution, we enrich the quality of life the world over. Headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, ADM connects crops to markets in six continents. Net sales for 2020, so that's a few years old now, were 64 billion. And they do focus on human nutrition, animal nutrition, pet nutrition, and industrial biosolutions. So this would be stuff like ethanol, uh, stuff for manufacturing, chemicals for manufacturing, oils, uh, that sort of thing, and services. I'm not sure exactly what their services. I think they work with a lot of farmers, you know, to get their products to people who want to buy them and companies that want to buy them and utilize them, right? I think that's what their services are. And the reason we are taking a look at them, down 24.2%, huge drop on the day. I'm assuming that they released, yeah, it looks like their earnings have recently released here. Uh, so huge drop on the day. Nonetheless, I, I definitely go look at this. It says January 23rd to the 28th. It's only the 22nd here. So they must have released that a little early. Uh, but anyways, negative 24.2% on the day, down $16.50. Close out the day at $51.69. We are talking about Archer, Daniels, Midland Company, ticker ADM, out of the consumer staple sector. 52-week range, as low as $51.49. They are right up against their 52-week low here. As high as $87.30. Average volume is $3.3 million. Today's was $47 million. I mean, that's a huge sell-off, right? Any, anytime you see people are just dumping out of this stock today. Uh, I know it looks like a smooth downhill here, but that, that's a huge drop on the day. Market cap, 27.57 billion, a beta of 0.78. So typically they are less volatile than the overall market, though that is a lot of volatility for a day. Now this is a little weird. Price to earning ratio, $7.19. And the same as their earnings per share, $7.19. Not very often you see them aligned like that, but I guess that's where they were at today. Earnings date, as we said, somewhere between January 23rd and 28th. I'm guessing maybe they released earnings a little early or people have gotten wind of what their earnings are going to be tomorrow and are dumping out early. Uh, that's just a huge drop on the day. Forward dividend is $1.80. They do pay out a decent, that's a pretty nice dividend yield actually, 2.64% starting dividend yield. And their ex-dividend date was November 14th. Uh, so they should have paid out dividend date that's a September 7th they should have paid out or be paying out here if they just had an ex dividend date in November they should have either paid out in December or be paying out in January something's wrong with this here uh, it says that the last time they paid out was September 7th but their ex dividend date was November 14th so that's weird one year target estimate at least according to Yahoo Finance where I pulled this information $90.23 so they see it 
posting a new 52 week high over the next year here at some time. Uh, so at least where there, and maybe this doesn't account for the recent drop. So you got to watch. That's why I always recommend more than one source. You got to watch that. This may have not been updated recently uh, to take it to in, in account this 24% drop. Now let's go into the statistics. We're going to look at dividend yield theory to see if this one is presenting any value. To do that, we go down and we look at their five-year dividend yield average at 2.61%. We compare it to its current 264 or over here where it says forward annual dividend yield, 2.64, same number. And since it is slightly higher, that does speak to some potential undervaluation, but not. I would really say this is at fair value, right? Right about right around fair value, unless you know something with the company has changed. Their dividend yield theory, it's 2.6, 2.6, 2.61, 2.64. I mean, yes, it's slightly above where it is in their five-year average, but not so much where I'd call this any kind of margin of safety. So I would want more of a margin of safety for this company, especially after a huge drop like today. Payout ratio is very low though, 24.34. So they've got plenty of free cash flow to cover their dividend, to pay down debt, to make acquisitions, to reinvest back into the company. Plenty of free cash flow, right? 75% of the free cash flow going to other uh, areas of the business other than the uh, the dividend payout. Now let's jump into the financials. A lot of good information here. You're going to look, you should be looking at their debt to equity ratios, assets over liabilities, look at their balance sheet, their income statement. Are their margins growing or are they shrinking? Are they paying down debt or are they taking on more debt? Are they diluting you as a shareholder? You know, lots of good information. Is their revenue growing? Lots of good information here under the financials you should be looking at if you are investing in individual stocks. We're going to look at free cash flow for our particular purposes. We want growing free cash flow over time because typically if a company has growing free cash flow, the dividends will grow along with that. Going back to 2020 here, looks like they had negative 3.2 billion. That's not good. Big jump up in 2021, up to 5.4 billion. 2022, another drop there from uh, 2021 down to 2.1 billion. I would need to do the math. I do not believe that this 1.4 billion repurchase of capital stock accounts for that three, three plus billion drop there. And so far, they haven't reported all of 2023. They, looks, they probably have another quarter left here, but it looks like another drop in free cash flow from 2022 to 2023, only 488, uh, 488 million here. So 2021 to 2022, a drop in free cash flow. It looks like another drop from 2022. So they have, I would say, even though they started here negative in 2022, so that would technically be positive free cash flow over the last three years. I'm seeing negative free cash flow. That's not a good sign. We don't want decreasing free cash flow over time. So I'm going to call it decreasing free cash flow on that one. That's a negative for this one. And I always recommend more than one source. So another one that I like is stockanalysis.com. You pick any sources that you like. Just make sure you're looking at more than one to make sure the information you are looking at is accurate and up to date. And according to the 12 analysts, they've had to take a look at this. They call it a consensus hold. I would agree with this. I would not be buying right now. I would wait maybe another quarter, at least another couple of weeks to see what news comes out with this, what shakes out on this. If they have not released their earnings report, see what's going on with their earnings report. Might might have been a fines earnings report and a uh, projection, a future projection that they, they reallocate or, or brought down or something. Uh, who knows? I have not looked at the news today on this one, but a big drop. Something's going on here. Investors don't just flock out of a company like that or flee out of a company like that for no reason. There's something that spooked investors on this one. So I would be looking to see what that is. And maybe, like I said, it, they re released their earnings early or some people have gotten wind of their earnings early and that's part of it. But I would definitely be checking to see what's going on with their earnings and any recent news on this one. Uh, and the, the decreasing free cash flow is a, a negative sign for me, a big negative sign for me. Uh, as a dividend growth investor. But like I said, their their payout ratio, only 24%, that's not terrible. But they have a low estimate of $56. So it currently sits lower than their lowest estimate. That would be a 8.34% increase from where it currently sits. They have an average estimate of $74. That would be a 43.16% increase from where it currently sits. And they have a high estimate of $104, which would basically be a, a double up on this one, right? You'd be 101.2%. All the while, you'd collect that two plus percent dividend yield depending on where you bought them if you bought it now it's uh, around 2.6 percent now i like to get the statistics here and look at the financial efficiency of the company to do that we're going to look at return on equity roe and return on invested capital roic i like 10 percent or better on this one sitting return on equity 
ROE sitting at 15.8%. So that meets the metric there. Return on invested capital, a little less than I like at 9.32%. I will say I did look at the margins on this one. The margins are not great. I usually like much better margins on uh, companies that I invest in. The margins were not very good on this one. I did not look to see how many years they've been growing or decreasing. But another metric I like is earnings per share. I like 5% or better growth. This has negative 8.34%. That is not good. Anytime you see negative earnings per share growth, I mean, I could stand you know, in low digits, 1.2%, 1.3% if the revenue was growing. But this also says one of these has to be positive. This also says the revenue is negative 2.11% forecasted over the next five years. So that may be part of it as well, right? That's a big drop, 24.2% uh, on the day. There's something going on here. This negative earnings per share growth does not look good. Negative forecasted revenue does not look good. Uh, the negative free cash flow looks like it's decreasing over the last three years. That does not look good. So overall, this is one I would definitely be holding on to wait to see how things shake out over the next quarter maybe. Now, the dividend payout, again, is low, 25.07%. They do have very nice dividend yields. So a low payout ratio with dividend growth, 12.5%. I mean, they are trying to entice investors with the dividend growth. But again, if you're losing uh, losing value in the stock per share, uh, price per share, then I don't know that the, you'd have to, it'd have to be better uh, dividend growth than the loss you would take in a stock per share. And like I said, forecasted revenue decreasing by 8% over the next Five year, or earnings per share over the next five years and revenue decreasing uh, above 3% over the next five years. That does not look good to me, even though they have dividend growth here, right? Don't, don't <laughs> forego some growth in the stock price for dividend growth because it could be an offset. Now, going back to 2020, 36 cents. They raised it up February 2021 to 37 cents. Looks like they raised it up again February 2022, 40 cents. Raise it up again, February 2023 to 45 cents. And I would anticipate another raise in February. Looks like they did. Let's see. They say the payout date was December 6th. So I'm surprised they didn't show that on Yahoo Finance. That's why I like to look at more than one source. This is from StockAnalysis.com. So they did pay out in December. Uh, it looks like they will have a payout, another payout here, you know, three months after that, typically November. So December, January, February, March uh, will be their next payout in March. And I would anticipate them raising the dividend if they're going to maintain this dividend growth sometime in February. So for me, Archer Daniels Midland is a no-go. I think it's probably close to fair value. Maybe needs to drop a little bit more to give you a margin of safety. Uh, but for me, at least, it would be a no-go. I already have a couple of companies like MPW that I'm on the fence with as far as whether or not they're worth the risk. This one to me would not be worth the risk right now. Now, if it dropped another, you know, 10% or something or 15% and gave me a bit of a margin of safety, then it might be worth looking at. And short-term traders, I'm not a short-term trader. A lot of times when a company bounces off its 52-week low, it does rebound a bit. So maybe there's some, uh, if you are a short-term trader, maybe there's some uh, avenue there to uh, to make some money. But again, I'm, I'm a long-term buy and hold for most of my positions. Some of them I might jump into for something like that, but that would be in another portfolio and not something I cover on this video or this channel or anything I would recommend long-term dividend uh, investors do. Well, that is really it for this video. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe down below. Hit that subscribe button and join us on this journey of financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Let me know what you think of Archer Daniels Midland. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So go ahead and drop any suggestions you have down below or questions if you want to know uh, taking a look at my portfolio, I do a uh, portfolio update every Sunday. So if you have some questions on what I'm invested in, go ahead and drop that down below as well, and I'll get back to you. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing your in for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk of candidates money. You never invest any amount of comfortable. You can always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and selected criteria, or seek the advice counselor or certified financial advisor.